Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Wessie's Angling. Today we're doing a fishery review at a fishery that needs no introduction whatsoever. It's Partridge Lakes in Warrington. This is a very popular fishery across the northwest, so I've been holding off doing a fishery review here because I'm sure a lot of you know it, a lot of you have fished here, but look at this setting. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. There's no better place to fish. There's so many features to fish to. Today we're on the specimen lake, which is called Holbar. It is an official specimen lake. It's a little bit more expensive to fish, but it's a mixed course fishery as well. So there's plenty of different fish to target. There's barbel, there's carp up to 25 pounds, there's good bream and plenty of other mixed course fish to target. We've fished here a few times, haven't we dad? Yeah, two or three times, yeah. I've always done well, I've always caught. We've managed to get on the pegs that we wanted, which is just down the end of this like island causeway type area. Basically how Partridge is set out, you drive in, you go past the cafe and the tackle shop, you turn left and you follow that all the way around to the specimen lake which is here. Like I said, it's a little bit more expensive to fish the specimen lake. It's £15 for two rods. I'm going to be fishing it on the method feeders like I always do. I'm not going to change up my tactics whatsoever. The only thing that I'm going to change is the hook length. Uh, you're fishing it on bite arms as well, aren't you, Dad? Yeah, I am, yeah, and I've got some uh, <coughs> 12 pound hook lengths to, to use as well. So, slightly scaling up the hook lengths because there is some chunks in here. I don't think there's loads of 20 pound carp in here, but they definitely go to that size. They go to uh, 20, 25 pounds easily. There's a lot of upper doubles in here, that's why they're calling it a specimen lake. I think what they do is when the fish get to a certain size in their other waters, because they've got plenty of them, they'll probably put them in here. Every time I've been, I've caught a fish that's been over 12 pounds. It's a really nice day out. Like I said, absolutely beautiful lake, reed beds, islands, little coves. It's a very well designed water and a really nice place to fish. So if you just look at the time and cur that's been taken in maintaining this, little coves, little bays, awesome for wildlife and just a great day out, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it was really nice, well looked after. As I've said to you before, they've got a cafe and a tackle shop on site. So if you wanted a bacon sandwich or you needed some maggots or you needed some rigs or anything like that, it's all on site. You don't have to go anywhere else beforehand. All the tickets are booked online. So we booked ours a few days ago just to make sure that we had a place. We've been planning on doing a fishery review here for a while, but like I said, it's really popular. You probably all know it. So I wanted to get through all the lesser known venues first. I'm going to get set up, I'm going to get some pellets mixed up, I'm just going to be using the Aquastim pellets today, 2 mils, and a mixture of different wafters. I can already see some bubbles coming up and stuff like that. The only thing that we're a little bit worried about is if they're potentially spawning, which would absolutely ruin the day. <laughs> but you've got to be in it to win it, aren't you, this time yeah. of year? Yeah, you've got to come. Yeah. Uh, but at least it'll give you an idea for the fishery and things like that. We've fished a couple of other lakes at Partridge. We've fished Willow and Piper, which are really nice lakes. And again, there's some decent carp in there, up to 18 pounds. I think they go to sort of that sort of size uh, in a lot of the lakes that they've got here, but you'll be able to find all that information out on the Partridge website, which, wow, that was a good fish right in this margin here. What I want to do is I want to be really stealthy here because I know that the fish come really close in. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably underarm some pellets into this margin and I'm going to have one of my rods over to the reed bed and I think my dad's going to do the same. It's probably best to have one down the margin and one over to the reed beds. But I'm so excited to get fishing. We're going to do the full day here. I've got a couple of flasks with me. I've got some sandwiches. So we're going to have a right good crack at it. And hopefully we don't blank for you today. I'm sure we won't. I'm sure even me and my dad will get a fish. Right, let's get some bait mixed up and get into the fishing. Are you ready? I am. Let's go. <laughs> I have got some stuff uh, to fish zigs if they start cruising. So that's kind of going to be my secret weapon today, but yes, let's get the aqua stim out and let's get it mixed. So that's the pellets that we're going to be using, the aqua stim. If you haven't tried aqua stim, I really recommend it. Absolutely awesome flavored pellets. 
I'll put a link to the website in my description for you so you can give them a go. And my dad's just going to be fishing his pineapple wafters, I would have thought, and pink wafters. Is that what you're going to stick to? Yeah, something like that. I, I, I might try them uh, F1s as well. Yeah. Sweet F1s there. Really so, well. I've got some Aqua Stim Sweet F1 wafters as well, which I'll show you in a second that uh, I think my dad's going to try out. We've caught them at a couple of places now, so we're pretty impressed with them so far. Uh, okay, so let's get these pellets mixed up. There we go, these are resealable bags as well. Obviously, we're not going to use this full three kilograms today. Uh, we might only use a, about a kilogram of it between us, but we'll see how, how often that we're catching out and how much we're catching. I'm not scared about fishing heavy today. I'm definitely going to be fishing heavy. So I'm going to put plenty of feed out. We'll get them carp home and in on the swim. Just need some water. Let's pour some of these Aqua Stim F1 pellets out. And zip up the bag so we don't lose any. I'm just going to put them in this water for probably 15 20 seconds. That's all you need at this time of year when the water's mild. It's really surprising how quick these pellets take on that water. So that's it, I'm not going to go mad with it. I'm just going to drain that off. They smell so sweet, these pellets, they're absolutely amazing. I'll probably have to mix some more of them up a little bit later on, but that's fine. Waste not, want not and all that. Let's get the rod pod set up. So me and my dad are both fishing with our Grace Prodigy TX one and a quarter test curve specimen rods. Plenty heavy enough for the carp that are in here and you get a good soft playing action with them as well not as stiff as full carp rods which you definitely don't need here i find that these preston grips they start to split after a while this is starting to split as well it's a little bit annoying i've had two breaks so far but i do like them they really do hold your rod secure get the wafters that we're going to be using out today so i'm going to go with eight mil washed out dumbbell cell and these f1 supreme fish meal wafters from aquastim my dad's going to be trying them out i might also give the power scorpex a try as well if i wanted to fish a bottom bait i've got some 10 mil tiger nut boilies with me as well which will just about fit in the method feeder these pellets will be perfect I'll split them out there between me and my dad. How sweet do they smell, Dad? Good enough to eat it. There's enough for a few casts there, and then I'll mix some more up. I've got to take my batteries out of these bite hands every time, otherwise the batteries die. I think they're constantly trying to find the receiver even when they're off I'm going to have my bite alarms really quiet today don't want to be disturbing anybody nothing worse than people with loud bite alarms so that one on and that one on so volume volume down I'm going to want this side as far down as I can get it. I'm going to have one down this margin and then one down that margin over there. Got my swing arm bobbins on. Cheap eBay ones. This is an NGT rod pod. A lot of people have been asking about my rod pod. Just a cheap NGT one, that's all. It's done me about three years, three or four years so far. Nothing wrong with it. Rods are already pre-set up. Got my leather light chair that's absolutely covered in slug slime from the garage. Awesome. Using 10 pound main line. Look 
That's it, already set up, my feeders are on. You fishing, Dad? There's definitely a carp down that margin. You see, my struggle is going to be getting tight up to them reeds. I'm sure I'll manage. I've already tied my hook lengths up. If you want to know how to tie up method feeder hook lengths, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner showing you how to do that. I'm fishing with 12 pound hook lengths. You might be thinking, well, you're using 10 pound main line, shouldn't you use a lighter hook length than your main line? Well, yeah, that's true but it's more about line diameter. These Guru hook lengths will break long before the Daiwa sensor main line at 10 pound will, because it's actually a thicker line. When they make this hook length material, they take liner already. They take all the stretch out of them, which makes them um, very good for bite indication, but awful for strength properties. And it also makes them very thin and hard to detect. So there's good and bad, it's a play off between um, having the strength there uh, and having the elasticity and um, them being very supple so I'm going to start this off one on a pink and one on a white I'm just going to drop the pink one down the margins while I'm setting up I'm just going to drop it literally down here for that one. I've had fish down there before here. And then the, the match white dumbbell wafters. These are a size 12 up by the way. A lot of you are saying these wafters actually float or with a size 12. I've not found that but let's try it in the margin. No, nope, they definitely sink. So I don't know what size hooks people are using when they're trying to use 8mm but I find that a size 12 always sinks an 8mm wafter, no problem. Whether that was a little bit more than a liner. So I'm going to have to get straight on this left hand rod if we get a run over to them reeds. I do not want to be losing. A nice fish in them reeds there. Uh, I'll try different areas along them but I'll probably aim for that bay first. I've seen a few reeds twitch and stuff like that down that way. Was that a carp again? I hope they're not spawning in the margin. Put a good amount around this one and get it over to them reeds. It's gonna be a tricky cast. Must have been a liner. Let's um, let's see if we can get it to them reeds. Might take a few casts before we're about right, but that's absolutely perfect. Not too close, but close enough. Right, we're fishing. Let's uh, sort all our stuff out. Get a lot of indication there, aren't you? Oh, that's going to fly off. So I'm just under I'm in a little bit of bait out in the margins where I'm going to be fishing. I might try down here as well at some point today. I've had fish down there. I'll tell you what folks, that sun's just coming up and it's going to be a really warm, nice day today. Look at that. I'm sweating already. <laughs> Well, I've got a fish on folks and my dad's got a fish on. Mine's gone into the reeds, so I'll just give it a little bit of a minute, see if it comes out. I don't think it's gonna. I think this is, uh, when we've had it, must be right in them reeds. I'm just going to put my bait runner on, give it a minute, see if it comes out. Mine's had it, I think. Can't even break the line. That's how strong that Daiwa sensor is. 
I'll just leave it there a second, see if it comes out. Just take your time with it, Dad. Some really good fishing here, isn't there? That's a good start, Dad. Nice long fish. Good start. Right, let me see what I can do about mine. I don't think it's coming out. Yeah, no. It's tightening up the drag. Dad's just had another fish down this left hand margin. <laughs> Straight away. What was that on, Dad? Uh, both on them F1 wafters. Both on them uh, Aquastim F1 wafters, guys. I'm just putting another hook length on and we're good to get back out there. Like I said, at least we didn't lose our feeder, but it shows you that um, the Scuru Engage hook length breaks well before your main line. Right, let's get it back out. It was only a small fish, I saw it jump in the reeds, but at least it won't be trailing round a feeder. My dad's had two fish already, which is a great sign. It's a playoff between getting tight to them reeds and making sure that you've got enough reaction time because the fish are going to be tight to the reeds. It's amazing how much quicker you get a bite, the tighter you are to stuff like that. I might try down this margin with this rod on the next cast, swap them over because it seems like the fish are moving along this margin for some reason. Maybe it's because that's where the sun hits first. Who knows? All that's shaded so it might come alive in the afternoon. We've got a feeling that the carp are spawning today. It means it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult than it normally would be. But they're right in and amongst these reeds. And they're really thrashing about, really going for it, which is uh, it's quite an obvious sign that they are spawning. They're uh, obviously moving around all the way across this far bank and reeds. Right in amongst them. So, we'll just have to try our best, but Dad's already had a couple of fish. Obviously, you can still catch fish while they're spawning, it's just a little bit more difficult. So, if any of you are wondering which peg I'm fishing, it's peg 22. There's a lot of options to fish to in this peg. The other times I've been, I've never caught many fish over to those. I've had quite a lot of bream out of that swim, but never carp. It's very deep here in the middle. This is a great winter peg. Uh, if you want a peg for barbel, it's better down this side under the bridge on the left. Like I said, I used to fish partridge quite often, so I do know it quite well. This is my favorite peg, but there's so many good pegs on the lake. That'll be a good peg. Um, I know that over to those rushes and that far island over there is a great peg. And over to the opposite banking, over the other side, across the bridge, that's a good peg as well, near that tree over there. So there are quite a few good pegs on the lake. I've just had a couple of bleeps on that right hand rod that's down to these reeds here. Good stamp of fishing here, like I said. There's a lot of fish that are uh, mid double, sort of like 15, 16 pound. Here we are, straight in, he's into them reeds. Uh, lucky though, because he was into them reeds, you got on it quick enough. So prices for partridge, 12 pounds of fish. Uh, one rod and then it's another three quid so 15 quid to fish two rods and the same again if you want to fish three I don't see why you'd ever want to fish more than two rods here um, I don't think the swims are quite wide enough for people to do that uh, they'll limit the availability on the tickets for the number of pegs so it's never going to be overbooked or anything like that and like I say you just book it through the website nice and easy pay online uh, you just show them the ticket on your phone when they come round Ooh, it's a very very tight cast that dad <laughs> for anybody that doesn't know partridge it's heavily match orientated they have a lot of matches on the covey lakes the information will be on the website where they've got matches on and things like that jesus scared me to death and um that way you know that you're not going to turn up and there's going to be a match on the lake that you want to fish i'm going to have a recast in a minute I'm probably going to be casting out fairly often, maybe every 15, 20 minutes. I want to build up a good bed of bait just to bring the fish in if they're cruising along these margins. Like I said, if uh, we're really struggling a bit later on, I've got the stuff with me to fish zigs. I'm not overly confident on zigs. Oh, here we are. Dirt edge. <laughs> got through the reeds. 
just that, it's too heavy. It weighs it down, you know. Mm, it's too deep. Let me try. Yep, that feels good. <laughs> Throw my camera about. So Dad's filming me here. And uh, he's got a run and absolutely just launched the GoPro. <laughs> he's good job the built to last. Oh dear. Mine got in the reeds. I just managed to get it out though. It's only tiny. I've come to a specimen lake and catch fish like this. Go to a coarse fishery and we catch uh, good stamper fish. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Like I said, it's uh, it's fishing for everybody here. It's not just specimen fish. So if you want a day out on the feeder, perfect. Right, let's get it back down that margin. See what my dad's got first. Can't believe I managed to get it out of them reeds. I'll have to check my line because it was really rubbing against the reeds. I'll have a look at it in a second. I'll recast both rods as well, probably. Because it's a warm day, we've brought the big waist sling and uh, I'm going to keep it wet. Go in some that one, isn't it? You're right though, Dad, some of the fish definitely are spawning. Maybe not all of them, obviously. But that one that I just caught, I'm pretty sure that was an F1. Yeah. Mm. Didn't really look at it properly, I just got it back. Too warm to be keeping them out, isn't it? Oh, it's a good fish, that. Nice common. Probably six pound-ish. Here we go. On the pink wafter. Pink wafter. Oh, it's bigger than I thought, you know, I think. Hooked perfectly in the side of the mouth, Dad. It's right in there, though. <laughs> yeah. Bunny carp, that. It's a good start. How long have we been fishing now? Half an hour? Yeah. Three quarters an hour? It's good. <laughs> right. Let's get this back down the margin. Mine did. Just run your finger up that line for me, Dad. There's no damage to it, is there? Always check this, guys, when you've had a fish that's gone into the reeds. We good? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good line, Daiwa sensor, in it? Tough. Tough line. Really forgiving. Let's keep the same wafter on. Here we are. Get on this. Oh yeah, I've got some on. Bloody bream, innit? <laughs> oh dear. He comes to a specimen lake and he catches specimen, doesn't he, lad? <laughs> oh, look at the size of this net here. <laughs> Absolute specimen fish. <laughs> into another fish over by the reeds just keep got to hope we get something a little bit better it's good don't want to be too tight it's ready to go out that as well let's put a white dumbbell wafter on this one What is it, a bream? It's a better bream than mine. Let's have a look at it. I bet it were in water. Ten, Ten seconds. seconds. Awesome. Lovely fish. Don't mind catching them, do you? What I'm doing is I'm just tightening up my bait runner drag. There's a separate little ring here that I just set. And the tighter that is, the better. You want it so that the fish can just about pull line and that's it. Especially when you're fishing tight to reeds like that. Let's get these out of the sun. Da. 
dad's in again, look. Having it away. I'm just trying to get an edge over him. I'm gonna put some of this washed out attractant over my pellets. Make them a slightly different colour. Can't have him beating me, can I? How you forgetting whose channel this is, Dad? Huh? Westies. <laughs> you're the Westy. you're the original, the OG. <laughs> the OG Westy. Not bream this time though, is it? <laughs> Can you see how a few of these pellets have turned orange? And that's what I want. I want that multicolored. I want some of them to stay the normal colour and some of them to go an orange colour. It's fighting this one, isn't it? And it's not massive, is it? Can you see how this water is just keeping the, the heat off the fish and the sun? Yeah. Yeah, they are. I found that over the last couple of times that I've been, they are long fish. I think the long fish are the male fish, aren't they? And then the, the, the shorter, fatter ones are the females. That's how it's meant to work. Do you not know that? Size to that, one there. that one's over to the reeds again. Maybe the bream have moved in there. Not what we want, is it? That's on the that's on the cell wafter. <laughs> it's definitely not a full specimen water. This is it. Wow, too many smaller fish in. It's just a it's a mixture between. I think it's a mixture between you know making sure that you catch and. Having a chance of uh, maybe getting a couple of lumps. I think that's the idea that they're going for here. Just a fun day's fishing all around. Well, my hands are going to be absolutely orange after this. Those, not all them pellets even came out, but let's um, put some of this in here. I'll put quite a bit of bait in this time. The fish are obviously feeding. Not all of them are spawning. So I'm not scared about putting a good amount of bait in, like I've said. A lot of them will break off on the cast, which is fine. Again, just so everybody knows, I've got these West's Angling t-shirts for sale. £16, posted to the UK. Uh, we've got them in black and in uh, the khaki green colour that my dad's wearing today. If you do want one of those, I'm in the process of setting up like an e-shop so you can go and purchase them online. But in the meantime, just message me directly, either uh, westisangling at gmail.com or on the West is Angling Facebook page or on the West is Angling Instagram. And for those of you that aren't currently following the West is Angling YouTube channel, I do all different types of fishing on the channel, method feeder fishing, carp and catfish. Um, I do product reviews, fishery reviews and bait tests. Oh, I just had to shut the camera off there. <laughs> had a liner on that left hand rod. Thought it was off then. <laughs> So yeah, loads of information on the channel and I always try and keep it fresh and keep it entertaining for you. Here we go. You're in there, Dad. That's definitely a carp. It didn't shoot off though, did it? Oh, it's come off. Wasn't even register on the bite on that. Nice bream. Nice bream, this dad. No, just down here, margin. Everywhere I go today, this has got its spawn in uh, palpules. Bream get this really coarse, grainy look when they're going into spawning. They feel like sandpaper. Let's get it back. Let him get on with his business. Again, I'm here to catch anything today, not just the carp, so all fish like that are welcome. Although I would prefer a carp. <laughs> nice uh, 14 pounder. <laughs> I can dream. Right drop this back down the margin I 
they aren't registering full bite or running because I've got my bait runner drag set really tight which the, it's, it's tight enough so that the rods aren't getting pulled over uh, but it's also loose enough that a carp could take line but I don't think these bream can but we're still getting a bite indication so that's fine I'm just going to check this one because I had a bit of a run on it pellets seem to be sticking in the feeder let's clean some of them out it's not been in long though and they're definitely not over wetted either nice bream definitely the biggest of the day it's just one bream after another but they're all a decent stamp another roach folks it's my third roach like this down there in the past 10 minutes so they must be in my swim They do fight out here, I think yeah. it's because it's um, quite a big fishery. He literally not even put his rod on the rod rest. <laughs> I'm going to give mine another five minutes and recast. So my dad's just been saying, and quite rightly so, there's not much coming out, is there? I think uh, we're doing the best out of anybody. Um, no, I've definitely not seen any carp caught, so I think, yeah, a fella, fella over that other side. Again, fishing over to the reeds on up towards the island. He's had a carp, um, but I've not seen anybody else catch. Like I said, it, it can be a tough fishery, but we always pick up the odd fish. Obviously, we're hoping for something better, but we'll just keep at it. If I see signs of... Uh, carp cruising and stuff like that then I'll, I'll break out the zigs and I'll fish a zig probably six inch under the water surface something like that another bream again nice fish over to the reeds I might have to put a slightly bigger up bait on I keep getting pestered I don't want to be catching them all day Dad's into a nice fish here, I think. Certainly took some line. Oh, careful, Dad. Dead boggy down here. We've literally just cast that one out as well. Must have a good amount of fish in his swim here over to this uh, reed bed. So, a couple of carp cruising. Don't think it's quite time to uh, swap over to zigs yet though, because Dad's still getting them on the bottom. But I would like to practice with the technique. Five, six pound. Oh, it's horrible. It's jaws split. It's healed though. Let's, let's take a look at that. Look at this fish here, guys. It's pretty mangled. How it's managed to heal, I don't know, but it's jaws in half. It's literally got a broken jaw. And it's hooked right, right in its broken jaw. But it's, it's healed well. And it's obviously still feeding. Mangled, horrible. How does something like that happen? Oh. Because I got this wrapped around me. Thing. Also, guys, it might be obvious, but a bit of a somber reminder for everybody: if you're out fishing on days like today, make sure that you stay hydrated, and also you put some suntan lotion on as well. Keep yourself safe. Be sun savvy. Especially when you're out on the bank for four days fishing. It's surprising how burnt you can actually get, isn't it, Dad? <laughs> we went uh, specimen fishing last year and it was absolutely red hot. We didn't realise how hot it was going to be, but we were absolutely burnt red raw. Obviously, we forgot our sun cream. 
Look, it happened straight. Are you into a fish straight away? I think you are. <laughs> Must have grabbed it on the drop. <laughs> anyway, enough of the depressing tips. Back to the fishing. <laughs> that one's got a bit of damage on it, maybe from spawning. So maybe they've already been through it, Dad. Yeah. Dad's knocked his, uh, his, <laughs> his rod rest over. <laughs> Get these babies here. <laughs> Chilling in the sun. <laughs> yeah, a bit damaged, isn't it? Yeah, spawning. spawning. So they've already done it. They're probably feeding up after spawning. Just had another bream on this uh, right hand rod. I keep getting liners down here. Um, I think it's just a matter of time before this one goes around. I think the bream, I don't think the carp. Seems like the bream have finished spawning and they're absolutely on the bait today. But like I say, we're not bothered about what we catch, are we, Dad? As long as, as long as we're catching. Done enough blanking for this year, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've got a lot of mine. Again, I don't, I don't think it's massive. But not a bad fish. Yeah, I don't think it's even uh, started yet. No, I think it's just more waking up. Aren't it? They've all got damaged mouths, haven't they? Yeah. Probably because it's quite. Uh, Everywhere fish. fish I think that's its good side. Don't know, I don't think it's got a good side actually. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, so four or five pound. Oh, yeah. Beautiful colour. Let's get it back. That was over to the uh, over to the yeah. Oh, right. Luckily it swum this way rather than the other way. Mm. But it had a nice tight bait runner on it so it didn't take much line. Look at it back. Maybe that's what it needs, you know what I mean? If you ever got a tight bait runner, yeah, it's well. gonna pull come this way where it's slacker rather than trying to pull it tighter. Definitely. I think one of the drawbacks to partridge, and especially whole bar, is how busy it gets. Obviously, because it's such a popular fishery, that has its downfalls as well, it is absolutely hammered. Uh, it's a weekday today and it's absolutely jam-packed. Bet there's, I don't know, 18 other anglers on it, maybe more already. And it's half past nine, <laughs> so it, it does get hammered. But you've got to be in it to win it. And I wanted to do a review here. I never absolutely bag up here, you know, but I'll always manage a few. And that's the main thing, isn't it? As long as you're catching. Okay, folks, so I think I've done enough yapping for today. So I'm only going to switch the camera on now. If I change something or if we get a fish, uh, that way we can save battery because we're doing a full day today and you'll be able to see what we catch. The main reason for these videos is obviously to give you an idea of the fish you're in to see whether you want to come and fish it yourself. Hopefully from these videos, you can get a good idea of where to fish and also how it fishes and what kind of stuff's in the lakes. We've had a few of these now. I've not filmed them, but quite a few of this sort of stamp maybe a little bit bigger than that one no, oh, yeah, what's oh no it's getting that other one it's all right keep steady pressure on it don't pull too hard it's out let's keep that steady pressure on that absolutely shot you don't just put it back down I've not set bait <laughs> he's not even set his bait runner this isn't a bream though is it <laughs> dad seems to be having a better day here and he's in a he's in a worse peg as well that's the better peg, or it used to be. This might be the new peg 22. <laughs> you see, once you've got them away from them reeds, you can take it a little bit easier, but yeah. certainly when you're over there, you need to put that pressure on them and get them out. Otherwise you're just gonna lose your feeder, lose your, your, your up length, whatever. And obviously, worst of all, the fish. I've not seen this fish yet, so it must be a good fish. Maybe about five pound. There's a big fish just swirled next to your peg there, Dad. Again, sun's pointing right into the camera here, so um, if you can hardly see anything on the camera, I am sorry. 
This is really taking him everywhere. Oh, a little bit like that. So just a little bit cut and infected on that side. So just going to put some of this carcass stuff on and get it back. What? Eight brain? No. No, seven. <laughs> seven. <laughs> Between five and seven. You get carried away with your nine pound there, Dad. <laughs> okay, folks. So this is the stuff that I've got for tying up zigs. I've got these, which are a zig aligner. Basically, you have your hook pointing that way and you just bury the shank of the hook in one of these aligners and you probably won't be able to see it on the GoPro but these are actually ribbed uh, to look like an insect tail okay so they'll be really good and what I'd do is I'd trim one of these DNA baits candy sticks down these are a really strong pop-up a little bit soft like foam uh, but they're full of attractants so I've got them which smell like a bit like a manila flavor and then these which is like a, a spicy fishy flavor but the manila is definitely the strongest smell. I've also got these. These are zig bugs. So they've already got the hook attached to them. So literally all you need to do is tie your line on. Okay. So obviously you would select the length of line that you'd want. So if you wanted to fish three foot off the bottom, you'd just tie a three foot hook length on. So it's very easy to choose which part of the water column that you want to fish. Um, obviously if the crew's in you want to be pretty much on the top uh, so it can be an effective method when you're not allowed to use surface baits these zig aligners they have a little loop at the back like a little band which you can obviously attach your hook bait on you just push it through expand it and push it through just like you would a, a band on a her rig um, you can either use weights like this but to be honest with you I'd probably just attach it to my method feeder there's nothing wrong with doing that it just acts as a weight uh, and the 30 gram so it's going to be strong enough to set the hook that's my take on it the line that i'd use for the hook length would be an eight pound quarter cruiser control so a nice um buoyant line but it's also got a fairly good diameter and uh, quite a bit of stretch for surface fishing um obviously you need some stretch in this just for strength purposes that way you're not going to get broke on the take so easy enough to swap over. Like I said, I'd just leave my method feeders on and tie the desired length of hook length up. Really easy. Right, let's see if I can catch my first fish on a zig. I've tied it up at about four and a half foot. So we'll try it there. We can always shorten it if we're not getting any bites, but I'm gonna cast it out probably over to the reeds over here where I've seen a couple of fish cruising. So probably just out from the reeds there in the slightly deeper water and we'll see what happens but that just looks like bread so I'm quite hopeful like I say I've never caught a fish on a zig so if I can catch a fish on a zig today I'll be happy because it'll show that the method works oh. definitely a bit unsure on the feet <laughs> I thought I'd have a quick walk down and just show you the cafe area and where the shop is a lovely seating area fountain going in a little display pond little ice cream parlor and you've got your tackle shop there and your little uh, cafe restaurant beautiful place you seem to be getting your fish when your cast really tight in but like you say it's a playoff between not getting it away from them reeds and uh, managing to get it free you know and if it is a really big fish which there are some in here that's the problem isn't it unless it swims into open water like this one's doing now it's on the zig rod I need to be I need to be watching it because if I get a few bleeps I'll probably have to strike into it. He's certainly having some fish over to that, that reed bed. Yeah, just doing that bit of a... Cove. Cove. And the net. Oh, that's 
so it's a nice one. Probably the biggest of the day, that, actually. Nice common. Going mental, aren't they? We need to put some more water in that. Unhooking that. They all got damaged mouths though, haven't they? Yeah. Oh, look at, well, look at your rod tip vibrating. That was me, that. Oh, was it? Did you catch it? Right. Yeah. Ooh, that was a big swell just there. I think it was a liner. That one's shot off around this way. See the bow wave? Where's that going? Well, folks, this is my first ever fish on a zig. Not what it is. There's the uh, method feeder. <laughs> Like this. this is on one of those zig bugs. Those silly zig bugs. <laughs> Here's a cap. I don't want to give it too much stick. It's, it's only an eight pound uh, Corda Cruiser Control hook length. I really hate this net. I'm going to have to get a different net. There we go, in the side of the mouth. <laughs> One of these little zig bugs. <laughs> it's just a black bit of foam with some feathers on. <laughs> but it's got, it's got it, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and that's just, um, I'm not even changed to a normal lead. That's still got my method feeder on. Just into the insert with a loop there. <laughs> and my four foot zig hook length. PB for me because that's the first fish on a zig. <laughs> Let's get it back. It's way too deep this net, isn't it? I need to stop using it. It's just a little bit bigger than my other one on the zig bug. What are the chances? Let's get it back out. They're the two zigs that I'm trying. It's the bug that's um, got the fish. Literally not changed anything. Just got my method feeders on and uh, a longer hook length. It's hooked the fish fine, so I'm just gonna get them out. They're both a similar length. Seeing as I've caught at that depth, I've just matched the other one to that length. So I'm gonna get them back out. That was over towards the, uh, the reeds, but I'll probably put the other one somewhere a little bit different. It's gone a little bit quiet on the zig front, but I'm keeping with it. Got my little mascot down here. Dad's having a really good day today. So you've probably had about 15, 20 of them bream, haven't you? A good amount of carp. 10, 10 carp. 10 carp, something like that. So Dad's having a good day. I'm sticking with the zigs. Obviously I'm not gonna bag up on fish on the zigs, but uh, I just wanted to give them a good try. This is more of a test day for me. I'm not worried about catching loads of fish. My dad's doing that for us. <laughs> so, um, that's a carp. Oh, that's a good carp. Whew. Wow. Oh no, it's in the reeds over there, Dad. Is it out? I don't think it's massive. It's a good bow wave, though. <laughs> Shot off that, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a nice carp. I think this one's a mirror. Yeah, it just seems to be more productive here where my dad's fishing for some reason. Or whether it's because he's uh, pinging out these four mills. But I'm convinced it's them four mills. Yeah. It, making a difference. It's a nice mirror actually. I was only thinking about this before, 
but our standards of the kind of fish that we catch now have gone up a lot haven't they so for example a fish like this maybe three years ago this would have been a cracking fish for us wouldn't it yeah, whereas down. now we're thinking you know that's not so big I think fish in general in these coarse waters are, get, are getting bigger aren't they dad or the average size of them is getting bigger most of these have been on the aqua stim f1 suite as well yeah i think it's just a matter of you keep going you'll get through these slightly smaller carp and hopefully you'll get something a bit better today dad Whoa. you know as the afternoon goes on because what are we now it's uh, about quarter to one so it's about about quarter to one obviously we'll fish through the afternoon and hopefully some of the bigger fish come on the feed i'm going to give the zigs another hour and then i'm going to go back onto bottom baits on the method feeder i feel like your bream are getting bigger oh, that's on the aqua stim f1 is it yeah i've had a lot of fish on that today well i'm going to give it another 15 20 minutes on these uh zig rigs and then i'm going to put the bottom bait rigs back on the four inch method feeder rigs now the good thing about leaving the method feeders on like i've done now is it's just going to be as simple as taking a four foot hook lengths off and putting the four inch hook lengths on <laughs> i'm just going to keep the four foot ones on these spools that i've got in my tackle box so i'm just going to wrap them around there and they'll be good to go for next time so uh, really efficient way dead quick way of changing up for zig fishing normally i would probably recommend using sort of like a, a semi-fixed lead system rather than this sort of semi-running method feeder setup that i'm using today i think you need the resistance there to set the hook but saying that we hooked that mirror cap fine before so maybe that's not the case i think there's enough resistance there to uh, set the hook especially with them being such a narrow gauge and a fine hook i'm sure that uh, i'm sure that'd be fine I am surprised that we've not had another fish after having that, that mirror carp on one, but it is what it is. My dad's still catching them on the bottom, so maybe the majority of the fish are still feeding on the bottom and it's only the odd fish that are cruising. Welcome back to uh, roach fishing with Westy. I think this is another roach. Oh no, it's a broom. Thought it were an heavy roach. <laughs> Come to a specimen lake and I catch an but silverfish. <laughs> Tell you what, folks, you can't argue with the aquastin pellets, can you? Fish go absolutely mad for them, don't they, Dad? Yeah. We've had absolutely loads of fish on them over the last few sessions. If I'm fishing the method feeder and I'm not fishing with bread, as you know I like to do on occasion, I'm using these. These are my favourite method feeder pellets. If you've not tried them already, please go and get some, try some out. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. The sweet smell that comes off these pellets is amazing. Most of the time I don't add any attractants. You literally don't need to with these. I recommend buying them in bulk from Aqua Stim. Like I said, I'll put a link in the description for you for Aqua Stim. I've been absolutely mithering Aqua Stim to get a discount code for my subscribers. And, <laughs> and today you'll be happy to know they've finally relented and they've given me a 5% discount code for you guys to use. So the discount code is Westy's Angling 5. I know it's only 5% guys, but look, it's better than nothing and it'll help towards the postage or whatever. So make sure that you head over to Aquastim, get yourself some two mils, especially the F1 Supreme sweet fish meal pellets. Uh, give the wafters a go as well. We've caught plenty of fish on the wafters, um, especially these new ones, I'll show you again. Especially these F1 Supreme sweet fish meal wafters. The brown, they go perfectly with the pellets. Like I said, the pellets are so sweet that you don't need to add any attractants to them. So save some money. Don't need to buy any glugs or anything like that. The pellets are fine on their own. They take on water perfectly. With the pellet wetter, it takes about 30 seconds at this time of year for them to absorb the water. So they take on the water really quickly, which is what you want. You don't want to be waiting ages for your pellets to soak. And when they're soaking, you can see just how much attractants are in them because the water turns like a milky white color. Obviously don't waste that water, you can mix that with some Aquastim uh, ground bait as well. They sell a lot of different ground baits uh, on the website. So give them a go, relatively new company. They definitely get my seal of approval. They get the Westies angling thumbs up. So uh, like I said, if you haven't tried them, 
give them a go see what you think i'd love to hear what everybody thinks of them after they've used them so feel free to send me a message drop a comment on the channel anything like that if you've tried them if you've used them if you've caught on them let me know again welcome back to the silverfish session <laughs> <laughs> they're all nice bream though i really can't complain but catching loads of them down this margin it's a massive net this it makes that bream look absolutely tiny but it's actually a good bream oh dad's in as well i'll switch it back on when i've got it in oh, nice fish biggest of today i think yeah i think it is that one was that to deeper water uh no that was back over to the reeds just on the point one of the nicest, nicer looking fisher today. It's not got really much damage on it or anything. There we go. It's a heavy, it's a heavy fish that did. It's probably about eight, nine pound. See. <laughs> but really, that's nice, nice huh? Yeah, absolutely shot off. Luckily, into the deeper water and not into the reeds. But yeah, nice fish. Best of today. Like I said, the, the guy on the uh, the peg next one here, he was just putting his back, but it was a big chunk of a mirror. Let's get it back and put it in here. There we go. Just shows you folks, doesn't it? If you keep at it, you'll get through them silvers eventually. I'm going to go back over to the reeds. And I'm going to keep one down the margin here and I'll keep fishing for them silvers. Get the best of both worlds. <laughs> I think I'd literally just swap that over to a Scopex as well, a yellow Scopex. But it's coming in, sorry about the helicopter. I've, so I'd literally just swap that over to a yellow Scopex. But let's get it back over there. Uh, you never know, they might be coming on the feed. It's going into the afternoon now, so it's about 10 past three. Uh, let's keep at it. With a bream. This one doesn't feel as big. Ah, it's small, I hope it comes off. Nope, oh, not coming off. I think the bream must have just finished spawning because they're absolutely jam-packed in them edges. Nice fish though, all of them. Good stamp. Well, I was just about to film a bit of an outro. But adds into a fish. I think it's a carp, this one. Okay, folks, so we're going to call it a day there and get packed up. Uh, we've had a good day's fishing today, haven't we? Cracking day's fishing, yes. Um, so we've had probably 30, 40 bream between us, all of a good stamp. Probably between... Pound and a half to two and a half. Pound and a half to two and a half, plenty of bream. Um, some nice roach. Yeah, roach up to half a pound, only uh, two rod. Yeah, and uh, some nice carp. Uh, nothing massive today, but they definitely are in here. Like I say, I've seen a, I've seen a couple of people catch uh, definitely double figure fish today. Uh, we've just not been uh, lucky enough to do so, unfortunately. But we've uh, we've caught them here before. Oh, you are. Oh, I have. Yeah, I've caught some chunks in here. So uh, that's why I used to fish it quite often. I always used to uh, get one or two of them when I came. A couple of things that I've been slightly disappointed in today is the quality of the fish. So a lot of the fish uh, were damaged, weren't they? And, yeah, and a lot of so that that's purely because of how heavily it's fished and how popular a fishery it is it's just a shame to see but it's just one of them things at the end of the day look i don't need to tell you how good partridge is it's an absolutely superb fishery if you haven't fished it it's definitely worth a day out isn't it oh yeah yeah it's a lovely place like i said nice uh, nice tackle shop on site and a, a lovely cafe yeah so good place to bring the family down if you uh, if you wanted a day trip even if you had to travel a bit to get here it's worth doing like i say the fishery only opens at seven there's no point getting here before that is there 
No, because they're on the button all the time, literally opening at seven. My dad's, just, <laughs> my dad's just stuffing his face with a biscuit. I just wanted to say before I wrap it up, if you have any questions about any of the different techniques that we've used today or any of the methods, please don't hesitate to drop a comment in the comment section. I always try and get back to everybody in the comments where I can. Also, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, now's your chance to do so and you won't miss any uh, amazing fishery reviews like this one. <laughs> um, definitely a hands-on fishery review anyway, but look, I hope you enjoy the fishing. I hope you enjoy the day session. So once again, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next Westies Angling. One last thing, you can get an evening ticket that's cheaper. If you come just after four o'clock and go to the tackle shop, you can get an evening ticket. I can't remember what it was. But, bit cheaper, uh, about half the price. It's about half the price. Yeah, at this time of year, you can get probably get four or five hours. So there. if you're local, you know, four or five hours fishing, you can pick up some absolutely brilliant carp in the evening, can't you? Yeah, definitely. So that's a good tip there from my dad. And don't forget, I've got West's Angling t-shirts for sale, 16 pound posted to the UK. So if you want one of them, send me a message, send me an email and uh, I can get one sorted for you. And as a thank you for watching this video, I'm gonna give one away. I'm gonna give an XL away. So uh, if you're not an XL, I do apologize. You'll have to wear it for a nighty or something like that. <laughs> so, um, so to be in with a chance of winning that, all you need to do is share the video with an angling friend make sure that you've commented down below and i want you to comment something specific so i want you to put hole bar one which is uh, the name of the lake that we're fishing today so hole bar one so just include that in your comments somewhere and you'll be entered into the prize draw so what i'll do is when the video gets three or four thousand views i'll pick somebody at random from the comments who's uh, included that in the comment and uh yeah we'll get it sent out to you so see you next time